ultimately, kids, you need to hear what's being said this morning because um, as adults, we still go through a lot of stuff and sometimes you go through things in your life and you're not sure, how is God going to do this? How is God going to work in me? And, and what Mr. Jason just said, that's, that's real stuff. When you're going through hard times with your friends or your family, uh, it's real that we have to, what I heard Mr. Jason say was, was let that stuff go or give it up, but we have to depend on God. That's, that's how we do that. That's how we let those things go. We don't just have the power to say, eh, I just want it to be gone and be done with. We don't have that power. We have to reach out to God, reach out to him and say, I need you. And adults, I'm talking to us too. We don't have the power. We, we think in the world's economy that we have security and we have things that, that we have that make us more powerful than we really are because maybe we have some money in the bank or maybe we have a good job or we have insurance or whatever. But God is saying, no, you need me. You need me. And this is what Paul said in, in verses 1 through 3. Finally then, brethren, and this is like furthermore, furthermore, here's something else that we need to think about. We urge you and exhort you, we encourage you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. And I just want to stop there because I believe that the Lord gave me a picture as we were praying and, and seeking him this morning. And it deals with sanctification. That's a big word, right? There are a couple words that that we use in regard to God saving us. And one of them is justification, where he, he justifies us, he makes us right in that, and he sets us apart. So justification is he's claimed you as his child when you accept the blood of Jesus Christ and you say, I want to be set free from my sin and I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. That's the process of being justified by him he set you apart. He set the youngest, the youngest one of us that is believed and asked, he set apart. The oldest, he set apart. And then he says that he sanctifies us. And sanctification is not just a one-time thing. It is a process. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Now, We've been talking about God wanting to take us higher. I want you to think about elevations. This is the, the picture that the Lord gave me. When we start working our way upward and naturally elevating ourselves, like going up into a mountain, what happens when you start going up a mountain? Has anyone hiked in the mountains before or dr even driven? What happens, Celeste? Okay, so great. So you, you get to see more as you go up, right? Maybe some things that you don't see. But what happens naturally in our bodies? Anyone know that, Aaron? Okay, air pressure. We start to feel that. We start to have trouble breathing, right? Elijah? Your ears pop. Right, so you're feeling that. Ultimately, the Lord showed me a picture of an oxygen mask, as we go higher, we cannot sustain what's happening. We can't sustain ourselves even as he wants to do things in us. We have to receive from him. Just like an oxygen mask allows you to go higher, it allows you to go, well, anyway. God wants to do that in us. And as we go through things, we are not made to be able to go through these things of our own power, of our own doing. That's where God 
allows these things to put pressure. And doesn't it feel hard to breathe at times? Doesn't it feel overwhelming? That's because that's the draw. That's the draw that the Lord is saying, I want you to come to me. I want you to reveal this in your mind. Let it be known. I can't do this. And he wants us to do it together also. We are not gathered here this morning without purpose, without reason. We are gathered because there are those who are struggling and those who are rejoicing and those who are thriving. That's why he puts us together. We're a body. We're different parts. You name your part. You be, you know what I mean? Let, he, he gives you the gifts and he names you. But think about any part of our body this morning, our hand, our eye, our ear, Whatever it is, our kidney, the functionality of those parts is to work together for life. And that's what God wants to do with us together. He wants to give you the oxygen that you need to do what he's calling us to do. That's the process of sanctification, the will of God. I'm not going to go into the rest of this chapter. I'll, I'll just save it. But God calls us to purity. God calls us to brotherly love and to allow for him to flow out of us to others. This is the desire of God. And so when we're in a time of worship, and I don't want to just define this morning as some special event because it's really not. God is willing to do this every day with us. He's willing to do this every Sunday that we gather or any time that we're together. He's willing to do this with and through us when we're at work or when we're at play or when we're shopping. It doesn't matter where we're at. God has a desire to do his will in us. This is the will of God, sanctification, that we take on the oxygen that he's willing to fill our lungs with. And when it gets hard, we know that that oxygen doesn't run dry. It doesn't run out. So as we gather and as we spend time together, and maybe as you're with, you know, the hardest person in your life to be with, that's where God is saying, humble yourself. Don't look at what they're saying or doing or how they're acting. Humble yourself. And God will do amazing things. He will fill your lungs. He will renew our minds. But we have to keep stepping and taking that course as God leads us. So I, I, we're not going to do any kind of weird showing hands or any of that stuff, but just you know in your relationship with God, did you walk with him today? Did you take the steps that he was asking you to take? Maybe you didn't hear a step to take. If that's where you're at, then you need the oxygen. You need to humble yourself before the Lord and say, I need you because I, I wasn't hearing you lead or guide me this morning. And that's, okay. I mean, it's not okay, but if that's where you're at, that's where you're at. That's where we're at. We just have to live in that and, and recognize, I need the Lord. I need the Lord. If he's directing you, and maybe it was too hard to take that step. Maybe fear or embarrassment or something was holding you back from taking that step. Please, don't 
Don't believe the lie of the enemy that says, it's too late now. You missed your, your window. You can't do that. It's too late. No. We serve a God who can do all things. Take up. Take up the call. Take up the obedience that God is asking doesn't matter if it's not during the worship time if he said go pray with someone or if he said man you need to put your heart just going 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 I need to be up there pray, getting prayed for then let's do that don't let the enemy rob us of of what obedience God wants from us this is the will of God your sanctification Take on what he's willing to give us. Don't give up. So with that, I just want to open it up again. If there's anything that we need to hear or if there's anything that needs to be accomplished this morning, if you needed prayer and you, for whatever reason, you just, you just didn't do it, then know that it's not too late. If you were supposed to pray for someone, it is not too late. If God gave you a word or an encouragement in scripture, it is not too late. All right. Well, let's ask the Lord to just, again, reaffirm that, can we? Lord Jesus, we, we thank you that you love us so much that you don't put time limits on what you want us to accomplish. You, you're allowing for another opportunity and uh, Lord as you do that so often we call it your grace and your mercy and so Father we we come to you as a people this morning as as a body represented here as we sit together and Lord the first thing that we we say is that we do need you we need the love that you offer through your blood shed we need the forgiveness and the new life that you offer through resurrection. We need the direction and the guidance that you bring through your spirit. We need your truth to overwhelm the lies in our minds. We need your holiness to come in, Lord, and we strive and seek to do your will. We want to be like you. We commit this to you, Lord God, that we really do. Lord, thank you for your love and thank you for your compassion. Thank you, Lord, that you're willing to take us. You're willing to allow us to humble ourselves before you. And thank you that you call us your own. Lord, we ask for action, for action to come out of this morning. That in our believing, we would have faith and that our faith would lead us by you leading us to the deeds and the words and the things that need to happen to happen. We don't want to sit. We don't want to sit and watch life go by, Lord. We want to throw that line out, like Jay said, but that line for you. We commit ourselves to you, Lord Jesus. Amen.